also wanted to mention there's still an insane amount of people that do not realize I have a gaming channel called Drewu. I've been uploading like two or three times a week over there. And if I ever don't upload here on this main channel one day, I almost certainly will have a gaming video ready to go over there. So please sub. This is the land surface temperature of South Asia right now. These areas in white are 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees for my Americans. That is unbelievable. And it's not much better for all the other areas that aren't in white. It's pretty much hot everywhere. The region's colored in black is 50 degrees Celsius or 122 degrees in Fahrenheit. And then pretty much all this red up here is 40 degrees or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a really good time to be in the southern tip of the subcontinent of India right now. It is way more manageable out there. Last month was the third hottest April the country has seen in over 122 years. It's even really affecting a lot of surrounding nations like Bangladesh and in Nepal. Here's the US State Department's travel advisory by level in each country. So in dark blue, you have level one, exercise normal precautions. Level two, exercise increased caution. In orange, we have all the countries where they recommend you reconsider travel. And in red, they're literally telling you do not travel. So of course, Ukraine, Russia, Belarus, they're all on the list. Keep in mind, this is as of May 1st, 2022. So there's a lot of different factors affecting this. For example, in New Zealand, they're asking you to reconsider travel because of COVID restrictions. But for these other orange countries, I'm thinking there's probably other factors in play, like Poland, for instance. I think I know why that's level three. I'm actually genuinely surprised who's made it to level one. Canada, all right. Australia as well. Those seem like good baselines. But then there's all three of the Baltic nations right next to a level four country. You would think that just being, you know, proximity wise so close they'd be like uh hey uh maybe we should bump that up to level two i mean especially considering a lot of western europe is level two but i'm thinking this has to do with covid restrictions as well once again this peninsula just being one of the most interesting level one next to level five japan in the same category as china what a complicated map oh yeah and then there's mexico who's just labeled as other whatever other means do we want to know what other means for reference here's what this same map looked like three years ago. Obviously, nowhere near the amount of uh, extreme colors as we saw before. Although, has Western Europe just always been level two? But Mexico over here just in a whole nother league at this point, not even on the chart. Oh, the actual government website has it broken down in a way more intricate way. Wait, why is Iceland in red? They weren't in red before. You worried about that volcano erupting? Oh, Mexico is in other because they're basing it off of certain states. Some states crazier than others, I guess. If you didn't already know, Brazil is massive. The country overlaid between Africa and Europe could stretch from Egypt all the way out here to the North Sea. And that's pretty deep into the North Sea. This is like the part of Norway that like no one lives in, right? Well, I realize no one lives out in the sea, but I mean, if you put it back over there. Yeah. And on the other side of things, from pretty deep inside of Russia all the way to Portugal. It's so easy to underestimate this country's size. And to make it even crazier, most people just live along the eastern coastline. Kind of hard to live in the Amazon rainforest, if you didn't know. That'd be like if the UK, France, Germany, Italy, they all had very little population density. And it was all coming from like Finland, Russia, Ukraine, Turkey. Every time someone says come to Brazil, it inches a little bit closer to taking over all of Europe like this. While we're on the subject of Brazil, here's all the US interventions in Latin America. I'm actually more surprised to see some of the places that haven't been touched, like Colombia and Ecuador. So in Brazil, the U.S. only intervened in 1964, but in a place like Cuba, the U.S. has intervened three different times. Then there was Haiti that was messed with after the Cold War pretty much ended. I mean, during the Cold War is one thing, but then there, like Venezuela, 2002, 2019? Bolivia also was something in 2019. They can barely even fit all these labels on the map. There's so many. Although take some of these with a grain of salt, not all of them are cut and dry. Google Trends, Johnny Depp versus Ukraine. I have a bad feeling about this one. So 90 days ago, this is what the map looked like. Most of the world was Googling Ukraine. Although they've always been big stands of Johnny Depp in the Spanish speaking parts of Latin America. They didn't give a crap about Ukraine, apparently. Damn, okay. Here's the same comparison, except this was 30 days ago. So as you can see, more countries begin to Google Johnny Depp. Brazil has also fallen in this continent, but also Spain and even Kazakhstan. I don't know. I feel like Kazakhstan or especially Belarus would be more focused on Ukraine. And then finally, here is as of seven days ago. You always got to be careful when looking at these Google Trends maps though because a lot of these countries might not have any idea who Johnny Depp is and they're just googling who is Johnny Depp. They might be more interested in Ukraine but they're just trying to figure out why everyone is talking about this actor. But to see some of these South American countries and only 1% of all their searches is Ukraine that's really low. Interesting to see Haiti go against the Caribbean. They're not focused on Jack Sparrow right now. The world's top arms suppliers and whom they sent arms to in the past 
past 10 years. In ninth place, we have Israel. They've been sending arms to almost everybody in Europe except for France. What? Why no France? In eighth place, we have Spain. Still trying to live out their glorious empire days, aren't they? They seem to be selling to much less countries on the map, but I guess more quantity to each one. In seventh, we have Italy. Not selling anything to Ethiopia. Is there still a bit of a grudge there? The UK's in sixth? I don't know. I expected them to be a lot higher. This is the first on the list that's selling to China, interestingly. But Germany is as well. Oh, that's nice. They're giving to Poland. Is this some 4D chess we're not thinking about? In fourth, we have China, who has a very different map than all the previous ones. No one in North America and almost no one in Europe. They're also not very big fans of India, but all the other surrounding nations. Wait, you're not giving anything to North Korea? I've got such a strange alliance. They're like forced to be friends, but I don't I don't know if they like each other that much. China's selling just all to Africa. They are giving a lot to Australia though. Venezuela I can understand, but I wonder what's going on in Peru and Bolivia. The third supplier of arms in the world is actually France. And what country is France not selling to? Wow. Well actually Canada is a surprising one. You'd think they'd like sell to their like French brothers in Quebec. And do they have something against Portugal? This is kind of messed up. I'm assuming this is like a two-way street. You have to also want to buy from the country as well. Well, maybe Portugal just doesn't want to buy France's stuff. In number two, we have Russia, who pretty much sells to all of their neighbors and almost all of their former satellite states, China, India. But you know what? The U.S. is on here as well. Unsurprisingly, all the BRIC countries are included. Brazil, South America, India, China. And to no surprise, the U.S. is number one. The U.S. does not sell back to Russia, though. And they also don't sell to China. You can kind of see their unfriendly countries list. Iran, Syria, North Korea. This is really not surprising stuff. They sell a lot to Africa as well, though. All also, they are selling a lot to Latin America, considering the interventions they did. That's weird. Then there's kind of a little bit of awkwardness for all the countries that have been selling to Russia for the last 10 years. Italy, Israel, and uh, France. I'm, I'm looking at you guys. This guy with the mega chat observation. Indonesia don't care. They buy from literally everybody. Such a brilliant map. There's so much to look at here. These are the shipments of Russian fossil fuels to Europe since the invasion of Ukraine. The EU has imported over 43 billion euros still. It's interesting to see where they specifically come from the Black Sea, the Baltic Sea, and some way up north. Also, is there stuff coming through the Suez Canal to Europe, or is this going out? Look at how big the Netherlands is. There's a ton going to the Dutch. I thought a lot would go to Germany. Germany's not the top on this list so far. Portugal with barely anything. What's Portugal doing? How are they importing fossil fuels, or do they just not? Keep in mind, you have to still compare it to before the invasion, and we don't know what that looks like. I'm going to assume it still has decreased since then. Age of the oldest verified person on Earth. So I guess we were starting to verify this by 1955. The first person is from Italy. I don't like that this is like in a diagonal. Like how old were they? Were they 107 or 109? Then there was this Dutch person next. We have the name of the following person, Mary Kelly. She was the oldest person on earth from 1960 to 1965. And she wouldn't get caught for quite a long time. She lived to be almost 115. 1975, there was two people from Japan. And then all these people in orange came from the USA. The USA were just killing it back in the... Well, maybe that's something right term. <laughs> then this lady from France said, hold my prune juice and decided just to live up to almost 123. And she was the record holder for almost throughout the entire 90s. It looked like for like 10 years. Is she still considered the oldest person to have ever lived? Things since then haven't been as dominant, which I wonder how much since population has increased and just like exploded. Will we really see a list this organized? You can see how like kind of clean cut it is in the very beginning. And then yeah, it seems like every year it changes hands. Now two countries seem to have really dominated as of recently though and that's the USA and Japan also all the people that were actually named on the graph were able to live with the title for more than a thousand days I didn't even realize that we kept track of stuff like this I mean I knew we probably kept track of the older people but in the way that they're doing it overall it is crazy to see that there is a trend upwards you can see as like we get more and more closer to the present love how random this one is this is countries that were mentioned in the Hungarian national anthem so in red we have Hungary and of course Austria was mentioned in their national anthem then Turkey Turkey, they definitely have some history there as well. And then finally, Mongolia. I knew Hungary likes Mongolia, but I didn't realize that they were actually in the national anthem. That is pretty crazy to be listed as just the only three. Here's that same concept except for Poland's national anthem. We have Sweden, who is mentioned negatively. <laughs> we have the dark red countries, which are indirectly named, but they're also negatively sung about. Obviously not a surprise. We have Italy that's just mentioned, not positively 
or negatively. Oh, and then there's France, which is mentioned indirectly, but in a positive light. Oh, I should have also said Russia. Russia is indirectly mentioned negatively. I mean, at least Sweden got name drops. Like, if you're gonna diss them, like, at least you shouted out the country. To not even put the name of your enemies? Oh, that's cold. Not surprised, though. Germany and Russia, they're gonna sing about them in a dirty way. The anthem called Poland is not lost was written in 1797 and then adopted in 1926. Here is post-glacial flooding 15,000 years ago in the Persian Gulf. I had no idea it used to be just a river like this. And slowly this thing started to expand and it went all the way up to, well, wait, so this was technically the Tigris and Euphrates? They combined to be one? And relatively speaking, you know, 15,000 years ago isn't that long ago. The Earth's millions of years old. We definitely gotta figure out what is going on under the Persian Gulf. There's probably some crazy stuff down there. And big thanks to, by saying this, I agree to be a sussy bucka ooh, Luxembourg lover. Drew's Argentinian fat grandpa. Nuts. Alex Whitley is mega Alfonso chad. Alfonso M6. A fat Norwal. Angel Sono. Bring w. back Poland Ball. He he XD. Jocko Bruni. Majestic Bruni. Unicorn. Marco Max Hindera. Cooper. Mimo Shiki. Five, six, ten. Philip RF. Robert E. Rye the, the Mexican 760. Why am I doing this? William the Conqueror. Thank you. 